It is indeed a great pleasure and honor for me to be here for the opening of the UNESCO UNIVOC Center in the Basque region, even in the Spain. This is the first UNIVOC Centers. Congratulations and welcome to UNIVOC family. In the morning, you rightly said UNIVOC Network is nothing but a family. Families of brother, sister. We work different parts in the world. We are in different stages of development in different countries. Some are really progressing very well, some struggling, some in between. So that's why we call it in the family, we have no difference. We are part of a big global family. It is indeed a pleasure for me when I was hearing today morning about the Basque region, how you have positioned yourself. I was feeling so happy in a sense that what a good start to open a Univox center here. Why I'm saying this? You have invited ministry, ministry of technical and vocational education. You have invited the foreign office, seldom people do that. You have invited the employers organization. Without employers, technical vocational education has no meaning. You have invited few learning institutes of advanced learning and then the Univox Center. I was thinking to cite this example to other country. They usually open the ceremony with only them talking. But technical vocational education is a multi-stakeholder partnership. If we don't understand that, then technical vocational education cannot flourish. So I'm extremely happy to see that you have demonstrated it in a evidence way, demonstrative way that what should be look like. Any problem, any issue, any concern need to be discussed within these players and find out different solutions and the problem. So that's why I thought it will be a wonderful opportunity for me to say few words because this is a good start. We have a lot of expectation about you about your institution, about the region. We know in the world there are some hot spot now. We call it hot spot or happening places. In a negative sense, in the world today, there are a lot, lot of hot spot. Big, small, minus small, in a negative sense. In a positive sense, there are few hot spot in this world. When you say, what are your criteria of good sense hotspot? To me, people are prospering and happy, although very difficult how you measure the happiness, but there are different dimension of happiness, economically, employment generation, growth and prosperity will be there. Environmentally, it should be friendly and socially it should be inclusive. Nobody left behind. I think in many of these criteria, Basque region and your work that you are doing is pioneer and I welcome you as a good hotspot in the Univoc network so that people will refer you for good purpose that go to Basque region, see how industry and institute linkage is happening and how it is also eco-friendly and socially inclusive. That's why we have started this journey today and we have a long way to go. Definitely we want to see you prosper. You will be not be prosperous if your surrounding is not prosperous. The surrounding will be not prosperous if the world is not prosperous and happy. And the challenges are getting more and more harder and harder day by day. So I think 
we that's why I feel your induction to our TVET journey is a quality induction and welcome you for this family. As I will speak only 10 to 12 minutes for this session and the next session I will talk in more detail. I thought that I made my presentation entitled like Transforming Technical Vocational Education for Sustainable Development, Emerging International Trends and Univoc Network. Few words I will tell here about Univoc Network regarding transforming Tibet for sustainable development we will do after this session at 12 o'clock. So what is this Univoc Network? Why it is Univoc Network becoming so important for us? This is the map of UNESCO Univoc Network. There are red spot and there are some blue spots. You can say how many red spots are here? At present, exactly on to date, there are 240 Univoc center in 170 countries. So these are the red spot. Then you can ask me why there are some blue spots. Because we work in a way that UNESCO has a five region, Asia Pacific, Africa, Latin America, Europe and North America, Arab region. This region, because of huge size and very difficult to manage, we divide and also not only manage, I'm talking from the empowerment angle, because we believed in bottom-up approach, not only top-down approach. That's why we divided the region into three clusters on linguistic, on geographical proximity and related issues in concern. Look at Africa. We have three regions here. Southern region, western region, eastern region. Southern region is led by Botswana now with South Africa coordinating. When you go to the west region, you will see Dakar is the headquarters now working for the things with Senegal taking little bit road with Nigeria is the cluster coordinator. And when you go to the eastern part, Kenya is taking the lead role to have that one. So they are the same Univox center, but their role is to additional responsibility of coordinating other Univox center in the region. And I like to see one dimension is in future, your bus this technica has to have a very good dream in a sense first you have to be proved within the network that you are in excellent center in some niche area the second one you have to take more responsibility not only basque spain but beyond spain in europe one of the cluster coordinators so that's the way the journey is and it is a rotational basis and depending on the willingness, we provide that. It is working very well. We have around 18 cluster coordinators working with us in that way and is doing their <coughs> fine job. So this is the network. But when you look at the network, you might think, ah, oh, this is fantastic. So many. Yes, it is the largest Tibet institution in the world, most active. But at the same time, I say there are a lot of challenges also. Because of the country's different stages of development, Univox centers are also on the different stages of development. Some too talkative, doing nothing. Some brilliant, delivering, proving themselves. Some at the middle level. Our role is to make the things happen. And I echo the word from the director who was saying, enough thinking has been done, let's do together, have some actions. That's the philosophy we believe. There is no word called failure. All we need to do is experiment, experiential learning, and learn from the, that one. So that way we see the prospect here. And I see your center. When I heard first time I came, I was so impressed with your challenge-based education, the way you are 
you are piloting the challenge basic uh, education you can be pioneer in taking that lead on pedagogy new kind of pedagogy and challenge based education apart from other that you have also doing like that so what how we really cooperate each other the first thing we do there are three terms you have seen cd km and networking means capacity development knowledge management and knowledge development and networking on the area we do experience sharing and policy learning definitely when we do any work we learn from each other we try to see what is the policy implication and how your policy can help a country like india or china or other country they can see the policy learning not policy borrowing sometime we have seen like dual training system in germany being misinterpreted as a transfer only not policy learning sense but basically we say yes dual training is nothing but is a work based learning that is being given higher priority and we have to do you don't have to copy exactly the way germans are adopting that because social actors and others in some country it is absence so that doesn't mean they will not do dual training everybody has a right to do the dual training it is a principles of work based learning like this we use the word policy learning that's policy learning will be very effective second facilitating regional and interregional collaboration so within the region within the europe there will be activity then europe and africa europe and asia europe and latin america there will be some activity so we divided at the global level regional level cluster level and univox center level there are different activities that we we coordinate we do pooling of resources help each other like in a sense a x country providing some program for y country and combining their resources maybe x has a good infrastructure y has good technical expertise so this kind of marriage is very very good we do benchmarking and comparative research we try to do some thing together you know i give some example on this there is a project we are undertaking called collaborative research project undertaken by the univox centers on one issue combining other univox center to involve like australia ncvr and tafe is a univox center they are leading a research project called return on investment if i put 1 dollar in technical vocational education what is the return on investment generally so far it has been done in a cost benefit ways that means only economic dimension in unesco we believe that not only economic dimension we have to do social dimension and also environmental dimension maybe your economic dimension is huge because in china when it is a fossil fuel technology has grown and employment rate was increasing like anything but environmentally it is fatal and it has much more disaster so how you can make return of investment from all this angle they are taking that lead role germany is taking on work based learning with cdfop you know the uh, research institution in europe we are working on image of tibet we are working on community sustainable model with canada so this they are doing with four or five or six univox centers together once you will be in i know <laughs> we will work out something on that direction and with limited budget we also try to mobilize budget for this kind of activity to encourage that it should not be only consultant base research it should be univox center base research which own the center owns and implement then strengthening of capacities and capabilities it will be like workshop seminar training program on different topic that we organized knowledge development and management one of the things i have already told about the management and this five product i like to emphasize which will be very very important on the online service if you go to our univoc website you can have a detail on that first one is a tvet forum 
most popular Tibet forum in the world. Five five thousand plus is the members now, every day, communicating, work talking to each other in an open atmosphere. You raise question, you get answer. One of the difficulties we are facing here, it is the English language, but now demand from Spanish, French, Chinese. And other language, Russian, they are all requesting us. I will work with you on the Spanish language. If you can work on coordinate as a subsection on that, so that it will be maybe, maybe helpful for Latin America, a few countries and others. And there is a proposal from Chile, Santiago, they have given us to, to do that and we can work on that. But we have introduced there a virtual conferencing. We have a one expert from the Univox Center coordinating on one topic and virtual conference for two weeks. Then submit a summary of the whole in a nutshell what is the findings of that. There is a template and we have done 18 virtual conferences so far involving more than 100 countries in every of the two week session which is a fantastic using technology and I need you you have to take some of this virtual conference, prepare on that, and it will be a very good way to know your institution throughout the world. World Tibet database, we have a, each country, we are preparing a Tibet database, four page document, simple structure, a template. Just to have a clear idea what is about that country. I think you have to check, most probably we don't have the Spain Nobody has done because there was no Univox Center earlier. Now you have to take the role. Basque region and Spain also have to prepare a database on the four page template and upload it into our portal. We have a lot of publications. Once you will be in and you will know a lot of publication and we have entire Tibet series, academic series are there, which is published by the Springer and still we are continuing with now this distributed mode. We had a glossary, you know, the same term we used in technical and vocational education has different meaning in different country. Like the simple word you use competency. You go to Bangladesh, they, their meaning of competency and your meaning of competency is not the same. Or you go to another country, they will say, we mean competency by that. So you can take a few simple words and you can see that how they are different in different country contexts. So we came up with a glossary where we have given all the definition and asking the country to decide which one is the most relevant. And finally, there is a one project we have taken which is going little slow and we need your really <laughs> engagement very, very strongly is on promising practices. We are not using the word good, bad, based, ugly, no. We are not judgmental. We are making to say that something is maybe best for you, may not be best for me because it is all country specific. So that's why we say promising practices means there are some hope and promise inside the practices which you can consider and you have to understand nowadays the partnership grammar has been changed means developing country even they are poor they don't like to hear only a model to be translated or you have to say this is the best model and you can go ahead they immediately switch off their antennas we have to start yes Okay, let's see how it can be, you know, these are the good points of this example. Can it be adoptable in your country? Do you think there is a prospect? Then they will come up and the peer-to-peer -peer relations has started. So that promising practice is another best one. So with this, I like to stop here because I can continue and then it will be, you know, the second part, I like to say that in the context, global context of sustainable development goal, what is our priority as a UNESCO Univoc and how a Univoc center 
can really help that to happen. So that will be more take a little longer time. So I will do in the second part of it. But nonetheless, I am extremely happy because I came here in November last year. Quickest mission, I think I did it because Luis and me has met in Canada. Uh, AAA, uh, the ACCC now it is called CCAN. They are very good Univox Center, Pan American, Pan Canadian Univox Center. They did splendid job. They are the cluster coordinator. So I came to know Louis there, and I was impressed. We are discussing and say, why not we do something? I say yes. In Spain, we don't have any Univox centers, and you know we have to speed up. What I, what, how I can help? Then he said, okay, can you make a quick visit to November? There is a seminar, and say I came. I met your deputy minister in the seminar. We have discussed, and then immediately we connect with your UNESCO, you know, office there, the club, uh, the the others, and things are moving very fast. And finally, I came now here to inaugurate. Thanks, to a tremendous spirit that you have shown. I think our marriage will be a long term. The chances of divorce is less. We will continue for lifelong, because I see this marriage will really help not only you, not only us, will help many other countries in the world, because our mission is peace, economy, other things are only way to achieve that peace, because UNESCO believe in peace, culture, and transformation. Thank you.